This morning, we have the blessed opportunity to hear from Adrienne Elliott about her time with Union. You may know Adrienne for her lovely emails. They're lovely, Adrienne. Mm -hmm. For more than two years, she has served our community through cacao, through her commitment to eco-faith, through her embodied faith in addressing issues of racial injustice, food insecurity, and educational inequity. And through all this, she loves us well and deeply. So it is an honor to have you join us this morning, Adrienne. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Um, hello, Union family. It's good to be with you all again this week. Um, as some of you already know, I am actually going to be starting a graduate program uh, back in San Diego come July. And so I am wrapping up my last couple weeks here with Union and with you all. Uh, <laughs> Yes, it's very bittersweet. Um, I'll be going to the Scripps Institute of Oceanography and UCSD to uh, pursue a year-long climate science and policy program. And so, <laughs> um, def again, definitely bittersweet. I will be uh, back with my family. All of my immediate and extended family are down there and I've been away from them for the last eight years since I've been up here in Seattle. So I'm really looking forward to living with my grandparents, <laughs> which should be really fun. They're 88, um, but obviously I'll definitely be missing my community, which has really kept me here in Seattle after college. And that includes all of you wonderful people and the wider community that we get to serve, um, as well as my friends and my church community at St. Paul's Episcopal down the street as well. Um, and so I just wanna thank you all for um, have. oh gosh, I'm getting emotional, <laughs> um, for being able to serve with you. Um, it's been life-changing, honestly. Um, and serving with you, God has really revealed to me what it's like to be the church that truly cares about the community. Um, and that truly cares about embodied ways of worshiping our wonderful, all-loving God. <laughs> um, so, ooh, okay. Anyway, um, it has just been a gift to see what it's like to exegete our neighborhood together, um, working at Kakeo and being <laughs> on the ground level of South Lake Union, as Renee likes to say. Um, you know, we got to experience, we continue to experience um, not just what it's like for the high paid executives high in the sky, in the skyscrapers, but also for the people who are living on the streets who didn't get the chance to move out of South Lake Union when the pandemic hit. Um, and to be able to provide education equity for our kiddos through the Lowell Project has given me so much joy. Um, but it's also opened my eyes to see what it's like for some of our kids in our city who, um, for a variety of reasons, don't have access to education. And um, just providing that safe space with loving adults, um, especially in this time, has been really important for me. Um, in addition to all of the food ministry that we've done, I don't know if you all know, but we did over 20,000 meals in this last year of the pandemic time. And that could not have happened without your generosity, um, without you showing up, without your prayers, um, and without your ability to continue to be committed to sustaining people and the power of tangible food um, and the power of transformative mutual community care. So um, through all of this, I've had the pleasure of being able to discern my vocation while at Kakeo and Union. And um, that was a big thing for me coming into this job a couple years ago. And so it's been amazing to see how that has been more than I could have expected or imagined. Um, and the Notkins and so many other people have really um, been a key players in walking alongside of me and giving me wonderful counsel um, and connecting me with other things and giving me opportunities like this to share and serve with you all. Um, and so 
My prayer for you um, is that you would continue to embody the love that God has shown us, um, that you'd continue to resist and interrupt empire and systems of oppression and show what it means to be the church, what it means to be people of the way. Um, I pray that you'd continue to partner with the surrounding community organizations and people and work for the welfare of the city. Um, and that you continue to discern your particular gifts um, and who God is calling union to be in this particular time, especially as we are re-emerging, um, as we're discerning what's going to be happening with our building um, and our location, um, but that you would continue to be the church gathered and also dispersed um, and that you would just embody it. You're already doing it, so keep doing it. And it's been a pleasure to do it with you. So thank you. Oh, Adrian, I've, I've already shed a lot of tears. So today I'm kind of composed, but I know more will come. Um, I don't know if I could have given our community enough warning for this news, <laughs> but I do hope you will absorb, you will take in all that's been written and you will just take that with you. Another thing I'm known for saying is once you're a part of union, you're always a part of union. <laughs> So we send you with joy, knowing that you, with you, hopefully knowing that you are always with us. Um, your dear partner, Gary Cook, um, is going to pray for you. Gary, will you pray for Adrian? Father God, as we begin to say goodbye to Adrian today, we remember Paul's words uh, to the Corinthians. The world in its present form is passing away. Uh, as we reflect on those words, we certainly can apply them to our own situation right now. Adrian's return to San Diego does indeed feel like uh, part of our world in its present form is passing away. We remember her in so many places. We've grown accustomed to working or just engaging with her, whether it's the Lowell Project or the newsletter and website or kitchen table conversations, Eco Faith, Compass House, Lake Union Village. For some of us, Cacao, or countless other places where she's been involved. Uh, and we actually wonder just how many job openings are going to result from her departure. We remember, too, that Adrienne accomplished all of this with grace and with skill, patience, compassion, thoughtfulness, a great sense of humor, <laughs> um, and a positive attitude. So we feel genuine sadness and loss, a wonderful person, a reliable friend, uh, and an exceptional co-worker in all the good things we aspire to do and be. That person will soon be gone, and a part of the world in its present form will indeed change. But if we reflect a little bit further on Paul's message, we can focus on two more things. Uh, first, we know and we need to accept that the world in its present form is always passing away. It's just the nature of things. And rather than try to hold it back somehow, our role is to give thanks for the good things it contained, and then to be encouraged knowing that whatever ending we face is necessary for new possibilities to unfold and to create space and light for new growth. Adrian has told us all, she's shared uh, what those new possibilities uh, will be for her uh, at Scripps and on her faith journey. Uh, we rejoice for and we rejoice with her as she sets out on these new adventures. So Father God, we give thanks for Adrian, for her contributions to Union, our immediate neighborhood, and our world here, and for the time we enjoyed together. We have been blessed. And now we begin to send her on our way, asking your blessing on her, confident, as Paul also tells us, that in all things you work for the good of those who, like Adrian, love you and who have been called according to your purpose. In your son's name, amen.